we have uh, been through winter now and finally, finally, it looks like it's behind us. And artists are just feeling the uh, compulsion to get out there and paint. <laughs> I'm no different. But uh, it's fun to um, take photographs as well if the weather is not so great and we get a lot of that. Here in my part of the world, which is Canada, sometimes it's just easier to take some good photographs and do a quick on-site sketch just to capture the essence of the thing and then come home to the studio where I am right now where it's nice and cozy and not so um, stormy or rainy or cold or whatever And where I can tune in with you and uh, have you tune in and join me for my painting session. One of the beautiful things about this time of the year it is uh, April and getting close to the end of April now. And the uh, colors, well, the true colors have not really kicked in yet, but the grasses are getting nice and green. And uh, it'll be a while before the flowers are all in bloom, but that's okay. We can wait. We're patient. We've been, we've been uh, patiently waiting through the winter months, and now here we are. Waiting for the tulips to pop up and from their sleep. Waiting for the uh, grass to get a lush green, which it always does at this time of the year. Have a few rainy days. What do they say? April showers. Brings the May flowers. And uh, artists will abound. They have signs out there that say, beware of the deer. <laughs> beware of the uh, moose. We've got our share of those in our woods, that's for sure. But also, beware of the artists. <laughs> they're everywhere you never know one of those wascally artist wabbits are gonna pop out and uh, you'll have to swerve your car or your SUV or whatever it is you're driving But I'm going to put us here, right on the shore. And we're going to look out over a beautiful lake. And one of the things that has been uh, a motivator for me as a painter is the fact that I know from all the years that I worked in a big bank, in the downtown core of Toronto. Toronto, for those of you that may not know, is uh, Canada's largest city. And um, some uh, three million people in the core. And in the greater metropolis uh, surrounding Toronto, there's probably 
five to six million easily. And it's spread out over a 70 kilometer area. So, so Toronto is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a pretty, is a pretty big area. And even though we're imagined by the world as living, you know, in Canada, the Great White North, igloos and all those cliches that are out there, but the reality is, is uh, there are no igloos around here. In fact, they're uh, all, if there are any at all, uh, and there's less and less these days, but they would be some, um, I don't know, 3,000, 4,000 miles, kilometers, whatever you want to call it, north of Toronto. But still, it's widely known that in Toronto, and in the Toronto area, they call it the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area, you see, that a large uh, percentage of Canada's population lives there. And uh, just because it's so close to everything else, I mean, we've got our big airports that take people to other parts of the world where they come from or go back to visit or what have you. We have the CN Tower. Everybody that comes to Toronto got to try out the CN Tower. What trip to the Big Smoke would be complete without it? But in this great province we have, called Ontario, we have some of the greatest lakes, ponds, rivers, and if fishing is your thing, you'll find lots of that. And if your thing is hunting, you'll find lots of that. And if your thing is painting pictures of those beautiful places, well, you'll find no end to that too. And that's where I come in. Because I'm not a hunter, I'm not a fisher, but I am a painter. And uh, I sure like getting out there. Take my sketches online, take my sketches out there and then come home and paint in my studio. Now, I'm starting out with very earthy tones in this painting. Some of you are noticing that already. We're, we're quite dark. And that's just the beginning. It's going to get fun. Well, for example, when I take a little bit of a... of my favorite blue which is a Severus Blue. Start to drop those beautiful tones into where the water is. And you'll notice that I'm leaving a lot of surface, but that's because I'm just putting the paint on the surface for now. I'm not trying to finish it all in one stroke. Nope, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to the different mixing tones as I get along here, but uh, I just want you to know that I'm just putting it on the surface. And this Severus blue is just so blue, so beautiful. You think about the colors of spring and you think about the uh, freshness of it all, the waking up of it all.
Well, Severs is just a beautiful color to uh, start that motion with your painting. I come right down to the edge of my tree and right down to the edge of my rocks and shoreline here, the, the close shoreline. If I don't get right into it yet, I'm gonna dip into a little bit more of the straight on uh, unmixed uh, Severus Blue. And with that, I'll touch the shoreline with it. And that blends the color of the shoreline into the water a little bit. And it just kind of harmonizes the painting a little more. You see? You always, when you want to paint a landscape, you want to have depth. And one of the ways to establish depth is by having a darker foreground, lighter midground, and then really light in the distance. And the way to establish that is to really allow the foreground to be intense in color and then less so off in the distance. So if you think about it here, you're standing on the shoreline next to this tree and the sky over your head is what's closest to you. So it's the most intense colored. It's also the biggest, broadest strokes. But as it gets further away, it gets lighter. And so I've just dropped a little titanium white into the mix here. I'll go back for a little bit more. And I know some of you uh, seasoned professionals out there are saying, well, your brush is dirty from using it in the below colors. And I would say, yeah, you're right. And that's on purpose. I, I, I like the muddiness of a brush. And I like the way that it harmonizes my color by dragging it through the other zones. It's just my way. It's just the way this guy paints. I take pride in in rendering a very kind of an earthy colored uh, painting and it's my style and I'm doing this stop and start along the top of the tree line there so that I get the jaggedness of the trees you see now if you guys are watching on YouTube which is where this is posted from there are youtube gods out there <laughs> youtube gods that uh, basically want to know if you're watching and they want to know if you're liking and if you are they'll give me a little more air and they'll show me to a little bigger audience and if you uh, don't mind helping me with that i'd appreciate your follow your, uh, I guess, on YouTube, it's not follow, it's subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just a very simple thing. You just tap the subscribe button. Do it now while you're thinking of it. And that way, every time I come on, you'll get a little notification and then you can join or you can join whenever you've got time the beautiful thing about it now I'm keeping my sky lighter than the water up here where we live the waters get quite cold and because of that they tend to have a bit of a dark tone to them and I like to say a turquoise a not too strong, but uh, when you're in a boat looking down at the water, it's pretty dark. We don't have those kind of transparent, super clear uh, visuals that you, you tend to get when you 
are in the uh, Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean, places like that. But we do get uh, cold, cold water, and uh, the cold water tends to look a little on the darkish side, and uh, so... Now, what am I painting on? Somebody's going to ask that. I just know it, so I'll just tell you right now. I'm painting on what's what's referred to as a as a mixed media uh, paper. It's a it's like watercolor paper. It's a little thicker, and it's uh, it's just beautiful for um, for painting in oils and for acrylic and for watercolor and whatever you like. Uh, the beauty of it is that it doesn't get all, um, it doesn't shrivel up. It doesn't get ripply or anything like that. Now, right along the bottom of my far shore there, I'm going to just tap some. This is black mixed with a little bit of, of uh, alizarin crimson. And that gives it a kind of a warmer tone. Now I don't typically use black, but I've been, I've been doing some, I've been doing some uh, abstracts lately, and the black is uh, something that if you're doing abstracts, well, you're gonna you're gonna have some, and uh, and so I'm mixing it here into the uh, into the painting and um, using the alizarin crimson to keep it from looking too dark and I'll just kind of mix that into the far shore so it doesn't look too sudden you see me too abrupt now if you happen to be um, watching from somewhere other than Canada I'd love to know in the comments say hi from wherever you're from that'd be great you get viewers from all over the world. Isn't the internet amazing? I just love it. Just love the way. I just love the way the internet just reaches. Get them from every continent, from every country, no matter what's going on in the world. We still get art lovers viewing. Where there are wars and where there are political unrest, all of that is happening, but people still love their art. And I hear from you, so I know that's happening. And it's, um, it's a beautiful thing when art reaches like that. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, highlight into my trees there. And this is just a dry, this is just a, a, a dry brush with no linseed oil mixed into it so that the paint is fairly gummy and sticky and as you drag it down the tree you get this nice rough kind of a bark you know the textures of the bark and to make the shoreline that we're standing on have a little bit more contrast we'll just drop some of these beautiful colors right on top what I call happy colors, the sparkle. And uh, I'm going to drop some of that into the into the far shore as well. And it take some pink, just a little bit of pink. I'll mix it with titanium white here and uh, uh, and then 
and some of the green that we use just to blend things a little bit. Because we don't want our picture to look too gloomy and dark. After all, it's spring and the colors are trying to come out. And just use your kind of a dry brush technique there and just drag it down and you'll get the, the look of trees. Yep. Standing up there. Waiting for the artists to come along and paint them. And just like that, see? I like the way that pink just kind of happens in there because it's kind of unexpected, but it makes the painting a little more colorful and cheerful. Now, what would that be in reality? Well, we have a, a lot of minerals in our rocks here in Ontario. It's a big mining, in fact, Canada is a big mining place. And, um, and so the rocks are in many colors and they just make it beautiful. When the light comes out and the sun hits it, just makes it gorgeous. Well, there's, of course, there's a lot more I could do with this painting, but you know, you got the point and I don't want to keep you hanging out here for your whole life. You need to go on and paint a picture yourself. So here's one of the most important things. Don't forget to put your name on your painting because you want people to know who, who did it. That's very important. And so there is MCA, that's two F's, two E's. That spells McAfee. And you are watching Robert McAfee right here on the Robert Painter on YouTube. And thanks for watching, folks. Don't forget to uh, hit subscribe and like and whatever else. Add your comments to the comment box. Try to be nice. Don't break my heart. <laughs> And uh, we'll see you again next time right here on the Robert Painter on YouTube.